Math 13, 14, Connor Junior College, section 1.5, Quadratic Equations, video 6 of 10. Solving quadratic equations by completing the square continued. So what could possibly go wrong? In a word, fractions. Allow me to explain. The procedure for solving by completing the square begins by writing the equation in the form x squared plus an x term equals a constant term. Specifically, the coefficient of the x squared is 1. If your x squared has a coefficient beside, besides 1, you have to fix that. I can't do this as long as this 2 is here. So I have to make the 2 disappear. How do you get rid of a 2 that's multiplied? Answer, divide. Well, there's actually two ways to think about it. I can divide everything by 2, or I can multiply everything by 1 half. I'm going to choose the latter. So first, in order to get the x squared to be just an x squared, I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 half. Now, sometimes that's not so, so catastrophic. But in this case, it's a minor catastrophe because there's one number in this equation that doesn't want to multiply by 1 half cleanly, the 11. If I distribute the 1 half, half of 2 is 1, so that leaves the x squared that I wanted, but half of 11 is 11 halves. Now, if you're going to write 5.5, stop. Quit being scared of fractions. They're just ratios of, of integers. In fact, don't ever use decimals in this class unless you're specifically asked to. So leave it as 11 halves, trust me. Oh, 11 halves x. Uh, half of 12, that's just 6. And of course, half of 0, or anything times 0, is 0. So, yay, we have a fraction, but we're not done dealing with it yet. Because now, we st well, well, we still got to move the 6. Let's go ahead and move the 6 over. That's a minor inconvenience, easy to fix. But now comes the fun part. Because to complete the square, we have to have add b squared over 2 squared. Add the square of b over 2 to both sides. Now, you don't actually have to write b over 2. You don't have to write 11 halves over 2. What you need to think, though, is what is half of 11 halves? Actually, it's not that difficult if you know that in, in arithmetic, the word of usually means multiply. So half of 11 halves is 1 half times 11 halves. And multiplying fractions is the easiest thing to do because it's the only thing that's intuitively correct. Multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom. 1 times 11 is 11. 2 times 2 is 4. It's a common denominator. So we're not adding. Common denominators are only required for adding and subtracting. For multiplying, you just multiply straight across. But we're not out of the woods yet because we have to add the square of that to both sides. So I have to square 11 fourths. That's easy. You just square the top to get 121, square the bottom to get 16. I have to add, yes, 121 sixteenths to both sides. So we're by far not out of the woods yet. Uh, the right side we need to combine. So let's go to the side and do the arithmetic. Because honestly, you may not like fractions, but you should be able to deal with them. What's the rule for adding fractions? Get a common denominator, add the numerators. What are my two denominators currently here? Oh, you don't see two denominators? That's because this one's a 1. Mm -hmm. So the common denominator is 16. But 1 is a good denominator to have. It's easy to manipulate into anything you want. I'm going to make both fractions have a 16 denominator by multiplying both sides of this fraction by 16. So what does that give us? Well, negative 6 times 16 is negative 96 on top of 16. And then we have 121 on top of 16. So if we add those, we keep the common denominator. Negative 96 plus 121 is 25. So combining the like terms on the right side gives us 25 over 16, which is actually a great fraction to have there. 
But we're not out of the woods, not by far, because we have to factor this monstrosity on the left that contains not one but two fractions. Now, under most circumstances, you would never be asked to factor using fractions. It goes back to the thing I showed you earlier about there being an infinite number of ways to multiply to get a certain product when fractions are involved. But this, isn't a, this is not an ordinary factorization. We set this up to factor into a perfect square. And if you recall, I told you that there was a hint to tell you exactly what goes here. The number that goes in the binomial being squared is what you get when you take half of this. And what was half of 11 over 2? 11 over 4. More specifically, positive 11 over 4. So the, the, one of the few nice things about completing the square is the factorization is extremely predictable. It will factor into a binomial squared, and the constant term in the binomial is what you got when you initially took half of this coefficient. Half of 11 over 2 is 11 over 4. The worst part is over. We, we still have to solve by using square roots, and even though there are fractions here, that's going to be a minor inconvenience. If we square root both sides, we get x plus 11 fourths squared under the square root on the left, and we have 25 sixteenths under the square root on the right, which thankfully I can square root both sides of that fraction. Let's move it over here, cancel the square, get x plus 11 fourths equals, don't forget the plus minus, the square root of 25 is 5, the square root of 16 is 4, hooray. Still not done yet. Subtract 11 fourths from both sides, and we get x equals negative 11 fourths, plus or minus 5 fourths, which I can do, so I should split the plus minus. x equals negative 11 fourths plus 5 fourths is one solution, and x equals negative 11 fourths minus 5 fourths is the other. Great, now I have to add the fractions, but at least they already have common denominators. Negative 11 fourths plus 5 fourths is negative 6 fourths. That's screaming to be reduced. And negative 11 fourths minus 5 fourths is negative 16 fourths. That's screaming to be divided out completely. One solution is negative 3 halves, and the other solution is just negative 4. Well, that was a long way to get there. But here's the great thing about completing the square. There are zero decisions to make. You don't have to decide how to factor. You don't have to decide whether or not to use square roots. You just do the problem. But as I mentioned, a universal technique is usually cumbersome. But it also begs the question, is it necessary? Now, I know this will always work, because I can always get it like this which means I can always get it like this, um, like this, which means I can always do this, but isn't there a faster way to the end? I mean, if I just do a bunch of these problems, I'm gonna be repeating the same steps over and over and over and over, I'm just changing the numbers. But isn't there a way to take all those steps generically? In other words, if I had a generic quadratic equation, like hey x squared, plus bx plus c. Is it possible to play this game, get to the end and say, oh, that's what happens to the a, the b, and the c to give me my answers at the end? Of course there is. So what's the end result? Well, watch the next video.